Oh my god, if you guys understood right now, if you guys understood the heat, oh bitch, it is warm today. I am so hot right now, it's actually ridiculous. You can see the sweat. You can see the sweat on my fucking forehead. And I curled my hair and I washed it last night and it's just so fucking fluffy, okay? So, yeah, I'm gonna try in 2022 to not start off the intro with me complaining about my hair. Like, why do I have to justify the way my hair is every single time I start a video? Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, by the title, is pretty freaking obvious. I'm gonna be doing a guide. <laughs> Today, I'll be filming the ultimate taboo guide. Now, all these books I've spoken about on my channel before, but it's been quite a long time for some of them. So I'm just going to give like an, oh my god, I'm actually sweating so much, I don't know how I'm going to do this. A lot of these books that I'm going to be talking about today, there's hair on my face, this day is shitting me. I just went and like stuck my head underneath the air con and just let the cool air cool me down because I had a sweat moustache. Yes, I did. A lot of these books I have recommended already, but I am just giving you like an updated version here for 2022. If you haven't read these books and you're into the taboo, here's where to go. Here's where to start. Here is where I started with the taboo. And to be honest, majority of the books I'm going to mention are the top tier, best of the best in the taboo uh, subgenre, I should say, or trope. Um, yeah, so if you're someone that's a little bit into like, you know normal romances that are morally fine then this video is not for you but if you're into some taboo shit some forbidden shit you like to read dirty shit shit that's so morally wrong shit that you would not approve in real life but you enjoy in your fiction this is where you're coming this is where you need to go this is where you're gonna get all the juices baby so i'm gonna ramble because i feel like this someone's car just drove past my neighbor get your car in the driveway and shut the fuck up. Thank you so much. Oh, you're reversing. Okay, you're reversing into the driveway. Oh, no, you're reversing onto the curb. The nature strip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't want to ramble too much in this video because there is a ton of books to get through. But I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry, they're not new recommendations. If you're a new subscriber, they will be. All right? Let's get started. The first book I'm mentioning is this bad boy here called Unconditional by QB Tyler. Now, QB is quite a taboo author. It's her specialty. Why do I feel like my hair looks like I've just come straight out of the 70s? Like, this, this is straight out of the 70s. Are you joking me? And I'm wearing linen today, like this linen see-through top. I feel like a mum. Maturing. Anyway, yes, QB is a bomb author and she definitely focuses on the more taboo and this was my first read from her and it's so, so, I sounded so Australian then, it's so good. So Unconditional is about this bad girl here and this bad boy right here and this bad boy right here is a cop and he is her guardian. Mm -hmm. So they're not related but he's her guardian and he raised her. If you're into QB's writing and her taboo style, then you'll love Love Unexpected, which is a book that I've mentioned tons of times here on my channel. And this is a relationship between a stepdaughter and stepfather. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is Steam McGee. Super smutty, super, super taboo and forbidden, but bitch, is it good. Mm -hmm. It is good, and it has a good, decent plot too. It's not just smut, um, which some people may be looking for, but I like a little plot with my smut. You know what I mean? Then we have Torn by Carrie and Cole. This is one of the best taboo books I've ever read because it's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful love story. Carrie Ann does that. She does taboo, forbidden, but makes it beautiful and just melts your heart. Like... Oh, you believe in these relationships and you totally want them to be together. You fight for their relationship. So Torn is a dad's best friend trope. And the heroine in this book looks at her dad's best friend as if he's an uncle. And he, she's known him her entire life. But obviously when she gets older, feelings develop and things change. We got the queen herself, Penelope Douglas. And of course, I'm going to be mentioning Birthday Girl, which is a boyfriend's dad trope. 
Okay, so there's this heroine, she's living with her boyfriend's dad and her boyfriend, and she starts crushing hard on her boyfriend's dad. We got another one from Pen Duggy. This is my favorite Pen Duggy book. Um, so this is Credence, and it's about this orphaned girl who gets a phone call from her step uncle, so she's not related to him, and he invites her to come and live with him because he is now legally her guardian. So she chooses to do that, and she meets her step uncle and two step cousins and gets romantically involved with all three. So this is a step uncle and cousins trope. Mm -hmm. So I don't know guys, it's up to you if you want to delve into this bad boy, but it's the best. <gasps> it's honestly the best. And it filled my taboo cup. Oh, did it baby. I loved this so much. It's one of my favorite standalones ever. I need to reread it. Maybe I will do that right now because I'm going through like a rereading stage. We'll get to what I recently reread. Um, and it's really just sparked me, man. Reading my old favorites has just like, <gasps> it's given me life. The Voyeur series from Fiona Cole is very taboo, the whole entire series, but I picked out two books to do with their tropes. So we've got Voyeur, which is a student teacher. This whole series is centered around a sex club. Yeah, baby. And it's super raunchy and it's so good. I love all the books, but Voya is where you start. And as I said, it's student teacher, so very taboo. Also in this series, we have Liar, which is a massive age gap and it's um, uncle's best friend. So this girl ends up having a relationship with her uncle's best friend and he partly owns the sex club. Now we're getting more into like the massive age gaps. So we've got Welcome to the Dark Side, which is one of my favorites from Gianna Darling. Um, and this is the MC president who has a relationship with the mayor's daughter. And she is like still in high school and he's in his thirties. Okay. It's not for everyone. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I understand. But if you're on this video and you're watching me, then you're into it. That's why you're here. And even if you're curious, and you don't read these books, you're here because you're curious. So you're into it or you think you may be into it. Give it a go. It's one of my favorites from Gianna still to this day. Welcome to the dark side. Zussy boo, Zussy boo boo. He holds my heart, bitch. He holds my heart. If this MC president stumbled by my house, revved his fucking Harley. Oh, you know, bitch, I'd be jumping on. You know, bitch, I'd be jumping on. Then we have Good Gone Bad, which is the third installment. So this is the book after Welcome in the Dark Side. And this is about the MC president's daughter and the local cop. So it's taboo in that aspect, but there also is an age gap. This one out of the series doesn't get enough hype, I don't believe. Um, and it's one of the best. Personally, I think it's one of the best. This comes straight after Welcome to the Dark Side of Me. Would I be talking taboo if I didn't mention my dear friend, my soul sister, Lucia Franco? <laughs> hush, hush, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Massive age gap. 21, 52. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This beautiful stunning lady on the front, favorite cover of all time still, um, falls for her client. She's a high-end escort in New York City, bitch. And there's also... A novella. So technically, two books. But this is one of my favorite standalones of all time. I like taboo, trashy, good, fucking toxic, like relationships. That's what I like reading. So this one is a good gem. This next one isn't that taboo. It's funny what people consider taboo. Like on TikTok, people are like, give me taboo. And if you mention anything with a massive age gap or they might be slightly related or it's a step something, they're like, oh, that's disgusting. I meant like brother's best friend. Bitch, that ain't taboo for me. Brother's best friend taboo. How is that taboo? That's like so common. I don't find that taboo at all or forbidden. So many people fuck their brother's friends, vice versa, and end up dating them. Anyway, I'm talking about the truth about heartbreak. Brother's best friend. Yes, yes. She is uh, adopted though. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm recommending this one is because this one, <laughs> the truth about tomorrow is a follow up to that uh, about a different couple and it's a fostered uncle. But the relationship starts when she's quite young. People gave Lucia Flack for off balance. No one said shit about this book. And I think this book is is way more taboo than balance is, personally. So give it a go if you're into it, uh, or you're curious and whatnot. But this is good, I really do like this book. It's time for a reread, honestly. I haven't read it in such a long time. I should probably check if I still love it as much as I did. All right, now we're getting into some pretty taboo stuff, okay? 
Yes, I'm talking about balance yet again because I just reread all of these books in the past week. It wasn't my plan. I did a giveaway over on Instagram with Lucia for Off Balance and Hush and a bunch of other books. And I was flicking through these copies that I own and I just started reading them again. Oh my god. And I just got railed, bitch. I was hooked straight away like I hadn't read it before. And I just fell in love with Cobra all over again. So this is a gymnast coach relationship, massive age gap, uh, very, very taboo, very, very forbidden, but fuck me up. It's so good. And Cobra is just the most sadistic fucking asshole ever. And he's so amazing. I love him. Um, he is Russian. He's where I started falling in love with Russian male characters in books. That's where it all started. There is, I'm going to, I'm going to say something though. I'm going to say something. If you are Russian, <laughs> You're going to go into this book and there's going to be things about COVID that you're like, huh? Like, there's some things that aren't, like, I guess, correct or accurate when it comes to Russia and Russian culture and stuff. Like, Kova has his mum's last name, but it does explain in the book why he changed his last name to a female last name. It was to pay homage to his mother. Um, and there's just certain things. Like, he, I, I find him pretty stereotypical. Um, but I do love him. Like, he's fucked. And the way that Lucia wrote his accent, like, even though it's all in English, obviously, instead of saying, let's go, he would say, let us go. So when you're reading it, like, you fully envision him talking with a Russian, like, a thick Russian accent. Um, so, I don't know, just be mindful if you are Russian that you might read this and be like, uh... <laughs> that's not right because I had a girl slam me months and months ago about when I talked about this book she fully like slammed me and was like that book is so inaccurate that is not how you say the last name that is not what that means and she full went off at me and I was like I'm not fucking thing calm down hun calm down I still think she did a pretty good job it's pretty hard writing a foreign fucking character if you're not foreign yourself I also spoke to Anna, uh, what's her fucking last name? She's going to watch this and laugh at me because I can't say it. She's fucking Polish. I can't say it like Vidish. Anna Vidish. Why is the W sounding like a V? I'm so confused. Anyway, we were talking about it the other day and she said she knows Russian and she said the translations in the book don't really make sense a lot of the time. Um, she's like, so, uh, so that can kind of put a damper on the series if you're... Russian or no Russian and you read it. I don't know Russian. So I just translate. I just copied and pasted in Google, translated it, and I was like, that's cute. I like that. Love it. Um, so, you know, whatever. Anyway, COVID's everything, man. Like, if this motherfucker was real, I'd do handstands, backflips on that motherfucker's dick. I just said that online with so much confidence, and I don't regret it. Again, this is not for everyone. If you're not into it, don't read it. But don't bash people that are into it. All of these books are taboo, okay? So, yeah. It is a fucked up series. It's really big. There's so many books. It's like the most toxic relationship I've probably ever read. Um, and there's so many things that happen that you're like, ah, oh, that's morally fucked up. But you love it. Every minute of it. So read it if you haven't already. Now, there is some books I want to mention that I don't have in paperback that I will now just shout out. So I wanted to shout out the Kane series by Shonora Williams. Oh, this is dad's best friend yet again. Four book series, toxic, bad, and delicious. It was so, so good. I read them so fast. I love Mr. Kane. Oh, baby boy. This is great. She also has the duet Dear Mr. Black, which is best friend's dad. Stop it now. Stop it now. This is really good. I devoured this duet. And I also want to shout out Hale, which is brother and sister. So this is an incest relationship by Kay Webster, as well as The Wild, which is a dad and daughter incest relationship. I would not suggest you read incest if you have triggers. Honestly, incest isn't my favorite trope, but I did read these and I do think they're phenomenal, especially for the trope. She wrote them so well. You're not meant to like them, but you do enjoy them, especially The Wild. Just the way the plot is set up, like, you understand why they would come together. They're living in the fucking wild. Like, they're going back to caveman status, baby. Um, so you understand why the relationship develops. And they're on their own. If you read all this shit and it's like, pfft, 
that's nothing for me. Read these two if you haven't already. So that's it. That's a quick little fucking taboo guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm actually reading a bunch of new taboo books at the moment. Let me know in the comments below other taboo books, books that I didn't recommend or mention in this video. I'm on a taboo kick. After reading Balance again, I was like, <laughs> I need more taboo. I need to like feel like I'm doing bad shit. I like to confirm to myself that I'm going to perish in hell one day. Nothing from Seven Rue, please. Sorry about it. Um, and also, um, when I say taboo and forbidden, I don't mean brother's best friend, okay? I mean real taboo and forbidden, okay? Give it to me, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Comment box down below. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs it up. It means so much. Also, all the links to these books will be down below. You can click the link and go straight to Amazon. I make it easy for you, honey. Also, links to my social media platforms are down below. I do have merchandise if you want to buy a new, like, cute little hoodie. I've got some cute dark romance hoodies. Go have a look. Um, what else? I do have a book club if you want to join the book club. Membership links down below as well. Yeah, okay. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. It means the fucking world to me, baby. I'm in a mood because I'm sweating and I'm hot and I'm hungry. Okay, have a good day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. What was that? Bye. I was like pushing you away. I was like pushing you away from the camera. <laughs>